Hey, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Are you looking to import contacts into your Motorola DMR radio and you don't want to spend a bazillion hours doing it? This video is for you. If it's helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. A couple of housekeeping items we have to talk about first. First off, uh, if you're using CPS 1.6 or 16, some people call it, this will not work. This has to be done on CPS 2. It's one of the advantages of this new CPS 2. So if you're using an older Motorola DMR radio, upgrade the firmware uh, if possible so you can get it on CPS2. If you're using the new Motorola R7, well, you're covered because you only can use CPS2, so you're all set. Also keep in mind that Motorola radios can only handle a thousand contacts. This includes this contact list and all the talk groups you want to run on the radio, so keep that in mind. It's not like other amateur radio models out there that can store hundreds of thousands of contacts, but I don't find that to be that big of a deal, to be honest. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to want to do is go to brandmeister.network. Now, I'm assuming that you're using Brandmeister because it is the most widely used DMR network in the world, so that's what we're focused on in this video. Uh, once you're at brandmeister.network, go ahead and drop open information, and from there, we're going to go ahead and select contact export. Once we're here, you're going to want to put in the talk groups that you most regularly talk on. So for me, that's like 3127 Minnesota State, 31272 Minnesota Metro, and let's put in 31555 Wisconsin DMR. Once you have those put in, we're going to go ahead and click on Run. What Brandmeister is going to spit back is a table, a spreadsheet of all the DMR IDs that have keyed up on those talk groups over a specified period of time. So now that we have this, we're going to want to go ahead and click on CSV, and then we're going to put in BM Video underscore contacts. So now that we have this exported and downloaded onto our hard drive as a CSV file, let's go ahead and open Excel, keep on working on it. All right, now we have our file opened up inside of Microsoft Excel. Uh, here under column A is gonna be the uh, user's DMR ID, B will be the call sign, uh, C it will be their name, D will be the last time they transmitted, and E will be the total times they've keyed up on any of those talk groups they put in my search. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of last TX. Now you could sort by that, I just think that the total TX count is more valuable. So I'm gonna highlight by clicking on the letter D or the column D, uh, right click and then delete. Now I have uh, column D as TX count. So now that I've highlighted TX count, again, I'm clicking up on the very top bar up here where the letter is. I'm gonna go ahead and go up to editing, sort and filter, sort largest to smallest. When I do that, I'm gonna get an alert saying, do you wanna expand the selection? And yes, I do. So keep expand the selection highlighted and click on sort. Now we have a list that shows us who is most active on these talk groups because every TX count is a key up. So now we have Eric, W0EDG, myself, Ian, and Robin, and Matt. So these are the ones that are most active on the talk groups that I hang out on. These are the people I talk to the most. Now this is gonna be a huge list, right? If we scroll down, we're at 1,454 total rows, but just look at how many of these are just random, like one or two key ups. Um, I don't need all those in my radio uh, because I'm probably never gonna to talk to them and never see them on my talk groups that I hang out on. So I'm gonna pull about 950 and here's why. I know I have about 35 talk groups in my Motorola radio. So I'm gonna pull 950 just to give myself a little buffer. Because remember, we can't go over 1,000 contacts, talk groups plus this list. So I'm only pulling 950, which is gonna get me probably 99% of the time I'm gonna get the proper ID showing up on my radio. So now what I'm gonna wanna do is a couple things. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to actually combine these two columns so you get call sign plus name that you can then put into your radio. You don't have to do it that way. If you find the next part of this video really confusing, don't worry about it. All you need is basically the ID and the call sign and you can put both of those columns into the template that I've created for you and it will work just fine. But if you're someone that wants the call sign and their first name to show on your radio display, keep paying attention. It's not that bad, it's just one formula, but just know it's a slight bit more advanced. All right, let's go ahead and move forward with merging the call sign and the first name so that way you can have both of them uh, display on your radio. The first thing I'm gonna do is get, now that I've got the list sorted, I don't need TX count anymore. That's just, it's just for sorting and now I'm done with that. Um, I also don't care about last TX, I'm gonna get rid of that. So now I just have the DMR ID, their call sign and their first name, but I want those two things together. But how do we do that? 
Well, that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go into uh, D2, which is, again, column D, row 2. It's the first space where you actually have uh, data. So I'm going to go equals C-O-N-C-A-T-E-N-A-T. Um, I am not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, from there, I'm going to, basically what I'm doing is telling Excel in a formula I want them to merge these two things together. So I'm going to put an open parenthesis. Uh, I'm going to take B2, and you'll see it highlights B2 for me which is great, uh, comma, space, quotation mark, space, quotation mark, comma, and then I want uh, C2, so space, C2, and I'm gonna close it, and I'm gonna click enter. Now, look what I have. I have W0EDG space Eric, which is exactly what I want. So I don't have to do that for every single row, don't worry. Uh, go ahead and highlight that new row. You'll see a little box in the lower right corner, it's a square. Grab onto that when your marker turns like a black crosshairs. Go ahead and pull that down. Now remember, I'm only gonna pull 950. So I'm gonna scroll down until I hit 950. All right, we're going, going, going. Need some good background music. All right, so we're getting on 950 here. Here we are at 950, okay. So I let go, and now it's pre-populating everything in that column for me, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I want. So now I have it styled just the way I need it to be styled, uh, which is call sign space first name. Now, uh, you, if you try to copy this column as is right now with like control C, it's not gonna work necessarily the way you want it to because you're gonna be copying a formula, not the data inside of it. So go ahead. Still, click on Control C, and I want you to go ahead and open up a new workbook, so a brand new section. We are gonna keep the column C, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C2, and I'm gonna do right click, and you're gonna see paste options come up here. Now, this is what I was telling you earlier, is if you paste it just normally with Control P, uh, V, it's gonna paste a formula and be broken. You don't want that. You wanna make sure you right click, go to Paste Options, and do Paste Values. It's got a little one, two, three icon. Click on that, great. Now I actually have the values from each of those cells, which is exactly what I want. I wanna make some more space because the other thing I'm gonna to wanna to do and make sure they line up, this is important. Uh, I'm gonna come back over here to my spreadsheet. I wanna grab the exact same thing, but I want ID numbers now. All right, I'm gonna, again, drag this down all the way to 950. And again, it's important here that you match up row for row because if you screw this up and grab like the wrong number of rows, the ID will not match the name and what displays in your radio will be incorrect. So again, I wanna go this far down. I'm gonna control C, grab that column, go back to my new sheet, and I wanna paste those in. Let's highlight the cell right next to the very first call sign and name. Let's right click and paste values. Boom. All right, and so now we have our DMR IDs, and then I have a call sign followed by the name. Now, the next thing we need to open up is our uh, Motorola DMR contact template. This is a secret sauce that you're gonna need to do this. So let's go ahead and open up that workbook, and again, paste this over. All right, I'm just gonna show you this first, and then I'm gonna go into kind of a dual screen mode, because it'll just be easier. Uh, this is the secret sauce of how you have to do this with Motorola. There's a ton of extra stuff and extra things that Motorola wants and needs to be able to upload contacts, otherwise it's gonna reject it. Um, so they're already pre-populated for you. Uh, they're set up exactly the way that you want them to be, they're private call, all that jazz. So don't worry about a thing. There's only two things you wanna concern yourself with, is column AA, which I see highlighted here on the screen, and then over into the very far left side of the sheet, it'll have a contact name. Those are the only two things you're gonna wanna concern yourself with. So let's go ahead and pop these new columns in. All right, now I kinda have it in this dual screen mode just so we can paste things from one Excel workbook to another. Uh, so again, only two things you gotta worry about, A and AA for the columns. So in column A, in the new Motorola workbook, that is gonna be where we put all of our contact information. So I'm gonna go over here again, grab it. My 950, getting close, there we go. All right, I'm gonna Control-C, copy that, 
and move it over here into starting in this case with row three and column A. And I'm gonna paste. All right, got that done. And the next thing I wanna grab is my DMR ID numbers. This is an important point and it goes for any of this copy and paste stuff. Don't highlight by columns like this. Go ahead and manually select the cell and drag it down. Otherwise, you could have some errors that are going to frustrate you. And I can already see somebody typing a comment right now about, I got an error and it said it wasn't the same size and why is it doing that? So again, when you're copy and pasting, select the first cell and drag down. Do not highlight the column. So we are doing that here. Again, we're going to 950. Here we are at 950. I'm going to control C. I'm going to go over to column AA, starting in row three. I'm going to click uh, highlight, right click, paste values. There we go. Now I have the DMR IDs in AA, and I have the corresponding name and uh, call sign information in column A. Now we want to save that file as a CSV file, and now we're going to open up Motorola CPS2 and load it into the code plug. All right, we have Motorola CPS2 opened up. At this point, read your radio or open up your code plug on your hard drive if you have it saved there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to file open, select my uh, code plug here and open it up. But again, if you just have your radio on hand, go ahead and read the radio and, and start from there if you want. Once we open up the code plug, we're going to want to click on contacts, drop open, and then highlight the second submenu for contacts. And we're going to want to click on the ellipses here and go to import. Now find your CSV file you just saved, and let's import that bad boy. So here it is for me, contacts, DMR, R7. I'm gonna highlight that and click on open. Now, we're off and running and importing contacts. It'll take a couple minutes to do this because there is a lot of data that's coming in to the code plug, so just give it a little bit of time. All right, all the contacts are fully imported. Now we can see we have this big long list underneath my talk groups of all those IDs that we pulled in. So here is that massive list and that's it, we're done. So if you dropped open any of these, you'll see here, uh, we click on KE0NA, Dave. We open up digital, we can see we have, it's a regular routing type. Uh, here's this ID number and it is set for private call, which is exactly what you want for a contact like that to private call somebody. So that's it. If you found this video helpful and you're still here, give it a subscription, give it a thumbs up, right? Subscribe, like. Um, if you have any questions, drop me a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you have any more ideas of other DMR videos for Motorola or commercial that you want to see, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time.